Thanks, Miranda. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, two years ago, uh, my life changed forever. Uh, my wife and I were preparing to welcome the birth of our first child, and we realized we were going to need to trade in our convertible for a station wagon. And when we went to the dealer to pick up the car, the dealer suggested that we install this manufacturer's app. And so I did. I didn't really know why. I kind of buried it deep in my phone in a folder. Not there. Yeah, not there. Deeper. There it is. So by now, half of you are probably wondering, why do I have 293 unread text messages? And if you're one of them, I'm really sorry. I get a lot of spam. Um, but it's safe to say that with all of this noise on my phone and with how deep this app is buried in my device, I really forgot about it. I did not give it a second thought. I never used it. Until about two months ago. I got a call from my wife. I was at the office about 5.30. And she, I picked up the phone. <clears throat> and she said, Adam, I'm really sorry. You're not going to believe this. But I just locked my keys in the car. And her office is like an hour away from where I work on a good day in Bay Area traffic. And so there was just no way that I was going to be able to make it to an important work dinner that I was about to head out to. And so you know, she felt completely powerless and helpless in that moment. She was going to have, she had resigned herself to basically waiting for an hour or two, probably for AAA to show up. I realized I was going to have to cancel my plans and go pick up our daughter. And you know, we both just felt incredibly frustrated and powerless. And I just kept asking myself, how is this possible? I mean, we have like self-driving cars, but it can't keep me from locking my keys in it. Like, there should be a better way. And without really thinking about why, as I do 100 times a day, in that moment, I turned to my phone. And when I did, I remembered that app. And so I dug back through all of those screens, and I pulled up the app. And of course, I realized I was locked out of the app because I'd been logged out, and I couldn't remember the email that I used. So I had to recover my password. And I didn't know which email it was in. And finally, I got into the app. And sure enough, there it was. There was this unlock, remote unlock feature uh, in the app. So I took a deep breath, hit the button, waited. And this text came through from my wife. It worked. Three exclamation points. Yay, I wrote back with three Ys. That's kind of embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> but like, hey, you can feel the relief and the sense of elation in that moment. Right? Like, we've all been there. And in that moment, I had had an expectation that things could be better and that my phone somehow had the answer on it. And this brand had anticipated my need like years before I even had that need. And they had anticipated the expectation that I was going to have. And so as a result of them anticipating that need, they were able to take this moment that could have been profoundly negative, a profoundly negative experience in involving their product. And instead, they flipped it and turned it into a moment of joy, so much so that I'm here telling a room full of 200 strangers uh, about it now. And so it, it also had a great impact on me. It turned me from feeling completely powerless in that moment into being an absolute hero. And so that's the bar for a great experience. I was so delighted, by the way, that I decided to check out this other little button off to the side uh, to do like a remote honk. Uh, and you know, I thought that would be kind of cute. Instead of a friendly little beep, turns out there's a bit of a lag in this feature. And so my wife was already five minutes down the road on her way home. <laughs> And the car aggressively honked at some kids in the middle of a crosswalk. <laughs> so the second moral of the story here is that no matter how good your experience is, there's always room to work on speed and latency. So enough about my experiences and expectations on mobile. I want to hear a little bit from, from the group. So show of hands, I'm just going to list a couple of experiences. But who here has gotten super frustrated when you've been on a plane and the Wi-Fi is like super slow or spotty or it's just doesn't, not working at all, right? Of course. Like we expect these things to just work. And even five, ten years ago, that was unthinkable. All right, another one. How about when you're hailing a rideshare app and you realize it's going to take about ten minutes for that car to show up? Who here switches to another app and checks to see if you could get another driver faster? I mean, that's crazy. Like, the, we, we are so impatient. We just expect things to be fast. And who here has given up on a task that they were trying to complete on their phones because they couldn't remember their login, there were too many fields to fill out, you didn't have the right information at hand? 
Like, I, I just expect things to be easy, and if it's not easy, then I'm giving up. And finally, who here gets a little bit frustrated, this happened to me last night, when you check into a hotel, and you give them your ID and your credit card, maybe even branded with that hotel, and they still ask you for your loyalty number. Like, you've stayed there multiple times. Don't you just expect that they remember you and that they have that information? We expect a personalized experience. And so the reality is, we bring all these little expectations to any commercial experience that we have. And together, like, we expect that in, in store, we expect it uh, online, and we especially expect it on our mobile devices. Because we know that our phones provide all these additional cues to provide speed and ease and relevance in the moment. And I think it's really important for us all to understand that expectation. Because you're not just competing with the best experience of other brands in your category. You are competing with the best experience your consumer has ever had. Whether you're a developer or marketing manager or a member of the C-suite, your livelihood is tied to business performance. And so it's all of your jobs to think about how you can make a better customer experience. And it's our job at Google to work with you to embrace new technologies so that you can keep up with those expectations of your consumers. And so that's really why we're here today, is to talk about how delivering the best customer experience possible can help drive better business performance. And truly, your success is our success, not just a line that I'm saying is true. If we can help you improve your conversion rate, then the return that you get on the media that you buy improves. And we want you to increase your return because we believe that if you do, you're more likely to continue to invest with us in the future. And we want a long-term partnership with you to help drive your business growth. OK, so another show of hands. How many people in this room would like to double their return on ad spend? I don't, OK, that was like 90% of the room. I don't know what's going on with the other 10%. Uh, but like, we all work really hard to eke out 2%, 3%, 4% incremental gains in return on ad spend by fine-tuning knobs and dials in our campaigns and in our ad creative. So double-digit performance improvements on that would be a huge deal, right? And we believe there actually is an opportunity to do this. And the answer in doubling your ROAS lies in doubling your conversion rate. And to double your conversion rate, we have to start by focusing on your mobile experience. If you can help your customers have a better experience, you can massively improve your business outcomes. So over the last 12 years, since the dawn of mobile, we've seen an explosion of smartphones and tablets. We've seen AR and VR and now voice-enabled devices. And with all of these devices and all of this growth, it's really distracting and can be tempting to focus on the shiny new thing and maybe forget a little bit about the fundamentals. And as an industry, it does seem that we've forgotten a little bit about the basics on mobile. Because 12 years into the mobile revolution, with now more than half of traffic coming in on mobile, mobile conversion rates, as Lindsay and Miranda were saying earlier today, are still significantly lower than they are on desktop. And that's really because of one thing. We aren't delivering the experience that our customers expect on mobile. So in mobile UX, we have an opportunity for massive business improvement. So what you do with mobile can really slow your business, or it can grow your business. Consumers on mobile phones are generally less brand loyal than they are in general. They're in the moment when they're on their phone, they're task oriented, they're task loyal. They're trying to solve a problem and they're trying to get something done. So if you can help them quickly solve that problem, they will be delighted. But if you don't, they will go elsewhere. In fact, 51% of online consumers say that after having a bad experience on a brand site, they're less likely to return. So experience is truly where you can win or lose the customers that you've paid to acquire. And so as the bar rises and mobile expectations increase, how do you think about keeping up? Well, I think there's a couple of themes that we've heard from customers. Uh, number one, help me faster. Number two, know me better. And number three, wow me everywhere. So let's start with arguably the lowest hanging fruit. First one, speed. So we talked about we're an impatient society. We want things fast. We don't want to wait long for our package to arrive. We don't want to wait for our ride share app. We certainly don't want to wait for our mobile sites to load. But here's the reality. On average, it takes 15 seconds for a mobile site to load in the US. 
Now, what if I paused up here for 15 seconds? Okay, that was six seconds. <laughs> uh, I'll spare you, that's really painful for all of you, for all of me. You can just kind of tell what happens, right? Like the annoyance builds in the room. You, you lose attention, like immediately. Uh, and so you can, like, in just a few seconds, you can really lose your audience. And this materially impacts your business. In fact, our research shows that if you make consumers wait, even just three seconds for your site to load, more than half of them will just leave you. They won't wait for your experience because they prioritize the task at hand and you're not helping them get it done. Even a one second delay in mobile load times can have up to a 20% increase in conversion rates. So again, many of you spend a lot of time optimizing your pre-site experience and your ad experience, and then we just kind of throw that away on double digit losses in, in conversions because of a slow lo site loading time. So what do we do about this? Well, the first thing is to understand whether you do in fact have a slow site and what you can do about it. And I'm happy to say we have a tool to help you do this. So when you get back to your office or maybe during a coffee break, and I'll leave this up here, you can take a picture. But we have a tool, it's free, called Test My Site. And you can basically take this and run your mobile URL through this tool. And in like less than a minute, you get a comprehensive diagnostic on your site. You can see your speed of individual pages. You can see the speed of your site as a whole. You can see how that's trending over time. You can benchmark against other sites and your competitors to get a sense of what good looks like. And there's even a calculator, my favorite part, that helps you understand the impact speed has on conversion rate and the impact conversion rate can have on your bottom line. It takes less than a minute of your time and you come away with actionable suggestions that you can then go and talk to your development team about. All right, so I want to pause. I've given you some ideas and some tools to think about on speed. But the macro point that I really want to get across is this. Investing in speed is a company-wide issue, and it requires constant vigilance. There's so many times we've seen organizations that make great gains in speed, maybe taking their site from nine seconds to six seconds, and everybody high fives, and they go back to their day jobs. And then over time, that speed, the, the, it starts creeping back up again. Maybe the marketing team adds some great shiny images to the site. Maybe the engineering team adds a little bit more code. Maybe someone stuffs a bunch of tags onto the site. And then, sure enough, you're back to that slow experience again. And so this, this takes constant vigilance. And mobile experience isn't just the problem of the marketing team. It isn't just the problem of the engineering team or the developers. It's everyone's problem. It is a business problem. And so I want to encourage everybody here to really be maniacal about monitoring speed and performance gains and to think about how you can add more conversions to your bottom line as a result. And my hope is that when you go back, you think about, over the next couple days, take in some of the ideas of tactically what to do, but then also think about how you can go back to your organization and be a force for change that is sustainable and sticks over the long run. The second expectation, know me better, this is really all about personalized experiences. So consumers expect brands to provide them with relevant experiences based on their relationship. Brands tell us they don't invest in personalized experiences because they're not really sure of the ROI. So if you've been waiting for proof, you've got a little bit. So 2018 Epsilon study showed that personalized experiences can have a direct impact on a brand's bottom line. We found that 80% of consumers are more likely to do business with a company that offers a personalized experience. Customers who found those experiences engaging were 10 times more likely to become a brand's most valuable users. And marketers are seeing the results. 98% of marketers say that personalization actually helps them advance their customer relationships. And 90% are saying they see measurable business uplift from personalization efforts. So one example, Hilton uses personalization to deliver a better experience with their guests. Um, they understood that consumers are used to controlling everything around them now with the convenience of a phone in their hand. And so, they created the Hilton Honors app, which they refer to as the remote control for a guest Hilton experience. And you can basically you know, check in, check out, skip the line, order food ahead, order extra pillows for your room, anything you can really imagine. It also serves as your key to unlock your door. And this functionality works at more than 3,000 of their hotels. When they launched the app, they had, over, they had a 100% um, repeat usage. So Hilton was an example of a company that put the customer at the center of every decision and it led to a better customer experience 
and good business results. So like speed, personalization isn't a nice to, it's not a nice to have feature, it's a business priority. So I'd encourage you all to spend time with your user data, with your site analytics team, and really understand how you can better anticipate the needs that your users have, and then test and experiment with different forms of personalization and see what it delivers. Okay, third theme brands need to be thinking about is how to create a consistent and seamless experience across touch points. How do you really wow them everywhere? in store, online, on mobile, in your app. And what this conversation off, often comes down to most recently is, okay, well, should I be investing in mobile web or should I be investing in a mobile app? The reality is this is not an either or decision. And consumers today are going back and forth between both. And so it's really mobile web and apps. If you're like many established companies who had a conversion-oriented desktop site when you started off, you probably started there on desktop, and then you said, okay, I need to have a mobile strategy, so I'm gonna build a mobile website. And then from there, maybe you invested in an app that was oriented around your most valuable users, or maybe a specific use case. Uh, but equally, we now see companies who are starting app only or app first moving in the other direction. So Wish is a great example. Wish started off as a very successful app. I think our most downloaded retail app of 2018. But then they realized that there was more value to be had in, going, in building a mobile website and more value to be had in, in building a desktop site. And because they realized they wanted to capture that full opportunity, they invested in both web and app. So the line between web and app continues to blur. In fact, half of all shopping sessions involve some transition between both a, both a mobile website or a desktop site and an app. And two thirds of customers tell us that they think they can accomplish basically the same objectives on both. So one other company that I think is a great example uh, who's, who's done this and really thought about a seamless experience across all channels is Walgreens. So Walgreens, obviously brick and mortar pharmacy, but they've brought together their teams and they've actually organized their teams around this concept to provide a single view of the customer journey. And so their digital team, who had built the app, came up with this idea for a feature that allowed them to uh, talk to a pharmacist or a doctor. Um, and what they found when they looked at the users who both engaged, visited their store and engaged in the mobile app is that those users were six times more valuable than a typical user. And so by focusing on the full customer journey, they were able to unlock this, this area of incremental opportunity for their business. And in order to do this, mobile can't exist in a silo. It has to be part of everyone's job and it has to be top of mind for your entire organization. So I'll close with a couple of reminders. First, put your customer at the heart of everything that you do. Anticipate their needs and expectations. And remember that you are competing, not just with other brands in your category, but with the best experience that customer has ever had. Second, customer experience is not a product challenge or a marketing challenge, it's a business priority. So regardless of your function, you need to care deeply about making a great experience on mobile because it really can make or break your overall success. So think about how you can bring this back to your organization, be a, fa be a force for sustainable change. And finally, the next time you're looking to unlock greater business growth, or maybe just your car, remember the key might be in a great mobile experience. Thank you.